Welcome everybody to another Canadian Math Kangaroo contest video. Today's topic will be strategy problems and this is appropriate for grade six level. Let's try a question, jump straight into the back. There are five buttons on the line as shown in the picture. Two of them have a happy face and three of them have a sad face. If a face is pressed, its expression switches. So a funny face will turn into a sad face. A sad face will turn into a funny face. In addition to this, the faces on each side of the pressed button also change their expression. How many times at least should you press on each button, so not necessarily the same number, in order to make all the faces happy? And what would your strategy be? Pause the video now, solve this along, and come back to this video to see the solution. Button one needs to change an odd number of times, right? If we press it once or three times or five times, um, then it will turn happy at the end. Notice that I wrote needs to change and not needs to be pressed because of course we can accomplish the change even by pressing the button that's next to it. Similarly, button two will need to change an even number of times three, the middle one, will need to change an odd number of times to turn happy. Four from the left will have to change an even number of times because it's happy already. And five will need to change odd, right? So next, if we press button one, right, button two will change as well. If we press button two, both one and three will change. And so this is what I've illustrated here. I am signifying a change by writing a one underneath the appropriate button. So pressing button one or pressing button five will only get two buttons to change. Otherwise, there's a triple change of color. All right, let's consider giving some names to these expressions. So if, let's say that we press button one A times, we press button two B times, button three is pressed C times, button four is pressed D times, and button five is pressed E times. That way we have something to refer to in our equations. What did we say? We said that button one needs to change an odd number of times. And from our expression with A's and B's, we can see that that means A plus B must be odd. Reading off what happens for button two, which must change an even number of times, a plus B plus C must be even, right? Uh, for button three, it needs to change an odd number of times. So B plus C plus D all together will have to give us a number that's odd. C plus D plus E for button four will have to give us an even number to make sure that the happy face stays happy after C plus D plus E changes. And finally, after D plus E changes, button five, which is pressed E times, the, the frowny face will turn into a happy face, signifying an odd thing. Now, for the next slide, I'm going to carry on only these conclusions, because we've already done all the run up to it. So let's remember the conclusions and forget all of the hard work that we put in trying to get to them, right? This is what we know now. How can we solve the equation with just these bits of information? Well, the first two equations, which are highlighted in red, imply that C must be odd because the first equation says that the sum A plus B is odd. And then we're saying that adding C to an odd number must give us an even number. The only way that will work is if C itself is odd, right? Then from the third equation, we have that B plus D, right? C is odd now, B plus D must be even because an even number plus an odd number will give us an odd number, not otherwise. Likewise, if we look at D plus E, uh, we see that it is already telling us D plus E is odd. And we have these interesting conditions now. A plus B must be odd, C must be odd, B plus D must be even, and D plus E must be odd. How can we narrow things down further? Recall that the question that we need to answer is how many times in the least should you press on each button in order to make all the faces happy? 
we want an at least there, right? So we need to find values A, B, C, D, and E that satisfy these parity conditions, whether something is odd or even, those are called parity conditions, but also they are as small as possible. One way to encode that would be to say that their sum, A plus B plus C plus D plus E, must be as small as possible. So let's do that, right? We want to minimize A plus B plus C plus D plus E. We want C odd, the sum A, B odd, the sum of B, D odd, and the sum of D and E odd. On the next slide, I will carry on only these last two crucial lines. Again, we forget all the hard work we did and we just focus on our findings. Let's see. Well, if we want to minimize the sum and we need an odd number, we're going to take the smallest odd number we can. So we're going to take C to be equal to 1, the smallest odd number we have. Now we need to consider cases depending on whether the first uh, button gets pressed at all or not. If A equals 0, then we can see B must equal 1 to be the smallest and also give us an odd sum. D must equal 1 because B is equal to 1 and we want their sum to be even. And E must equal 0, again, to minimize everything, giving us that the total sum is just 3 and B, D, and C are 1, everything else here. If A equals 1, if we do press that first button, then B equals 0, D equals 0, E equals 1, and the sum is once again 3. So to turn all the faces happy, we need to press at least three buttons. No matter which case we consider, we have, in conclusion, to turn all the faces happy, there are two ways to do that. Press the middle buttons, two, three, and four, or press every other button, one, three, and five. Either way, at least three buttons must be pressed. Finally, let's try another question. You are given an M by N board divided into M rows and N columns of identical squares. It is known that the board can be covered with tetraminos. These are figures made up of four squares in the shape of the letter T. Show that M times N is divisible by eight. How do we go about this? Take a second, pause this video, give it a nice good think, and then come back to us. You ready? Let us start with an example of a four by four board covered by four tetraminos. So we don't know what M and N are, so we're going to play around a little bit just to see how things are. Let's say we have two white tetraminos and two black tetraminos. Notice that indeed four by four equals 16 is going to be divisible by eight. First of all, when we say that the board can be covered with tetraminos, this means that all squares must be covered by one tetramino and no part of a tetramino sticks outside of the board, right? That's just somewhat common sense, but it's also common language that we see over and over in these types of problems. Second, if each tetramino covers four squares, why is it obvious that M times N must be divisible by eight, right? It's obvious that M by N must be divisible by four because we have some amount of tetraminos on the board and the board is m by n and each tetramino is four squares long right so why that extra multiple of two there when i first encountered this problem i drew a bunch of different rectangular boards and covered them into tetraminos trying to figure out if there was a pattern or some way that things can be arranged but alas this approach is tedious and even if there is a way to accomplish it it was so long that i just did not see it there is a trick. We can take a shortcut. Can you guess it? So let's see. Uh, here is a four by six board. Uh, can you see how it could be covered by tetraminos? Let's turn it into a chessboard and color it in. Because m by n is divisible by four, either n or m has to be equal. Agreed? because they can't both be odd or the whole product wouldn't be divisible by four. So let's suppose that M is even. So on the picture, M is four, but let's just suppose for now that M is even without loss of generality. 
each column contains an equal number of black and white squares. Indeed, just look at the first column in the example, right? It starts with a white square at the top, then white, then black squares alternate, and it ends with a black square at the bottom. So each column is going to contain, because M is even, an equal number of black and white squares. This means that the number of white squares on the entire board is equal to the number of black squares. On top of the next slide, I'm going to record that information only. Right? Again, we're going to focus on what we've learned, not how we got there. So the number of white squares is the number of black squares in each column, which means the number of white squares equals the number of black squares across the board, since it's true for each column. Right? Now let's remember that the tetraminos cover the chessboard. And here are the ways that a tetramino might fall. It might have a black square in the middle or a white square in the middle, right? Um, suppose that in the covering, we use X tetraminos of type one with a black square in the middle and Y tetraminos of um, type two. Then the total number of white squares what would that be? Well, 3x, because uh, we have x amounts of type 1, and they each have three white squares, plus y, because we have y type 2 tetraminos, and they each have one white square. But, right, uh, we can do the same thing for the number of black squares covered. This is going to be x plus 3y. The roles are reversed of the type 1 and the type 2 and the x and the y. But since the number of white squares on the board is equal to the number of black squares on the board, we now have built ourselves an equality, an equation that we can solve. 3x plus y must equal x plus 3y. In other words, 2x must equal 2y. In other words, x equals y. So really, this is somewhat surprising at first, the tetraminos of the first type there's going to be equally many of them as the tetraminos of the second type. We have total symmetry in this problem. So the total number of squares on the board is m times n, and that must be equal to the white squares covered plus the black squares that are covered. So in total, m times n equals 3x plus y plus x plus 3y, but we just mentioned that the x's and the y's are exactly the same. So this is 4x plus 4x being 8x. There we go. X is the number of type 1 tetraminos, being a whole number. And so M times N equals 8 times a whole number. M times N is indeed divisible by 8. Thank you very much for listening. Hope to see you in one of the classes soon. Have a great day. Bye.